live from Studio 6B in the Fimble Jamont Recreational Center for the Fashionably Exasperated, it's Crane Funko Live. And now, join us for lots of prank phone calls. <laughs> Grand Funkles. Call him up. <laughs> That's what we're going to do tonight. Hey, I got notified of the show starting. Good happens, for you. Happens about one out of every, every eight shows we do. YouTube works properly and notifies people, I guess. Okay. Well, as you can tell, my co-host tonight is Mr. Dudley. Captain Greg. I'm sorry, Greg. <laughs> Shit, I I got him mixed up. I folks, I'm not good with remembering the names of soundboards. You guys are really whacked out. Dudley also sounds like he has yogurt in his mouth, so that's why I got him mixed up. Is it some Danimals? <laughs> that's Darius Rucker's favorite Danimal. So they have Danimals. Um, I know this because I have a kid. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but when Danimals became a thing, probably in the 90s, I'm guessing uh, it was like yogurt with animals on it, on the container. Um, and now they have, they're just like Paw Patrol or Frozen, so it's just like characters from shit. So, I mean, it's not, there's not really, I guess Paw Patrol, it's animals, but, uh, like with the Frozen, it's, it's, uh, yeah, what's that broad's name? Uh, one of them's Anna, I think. Uh, what's the other one? I have never even seen <laughs> animals, so I wouldn't know. Or, yeah, what about Frozen? No. Have you seen that? I have not. Is there an echo? I see here for the comments that say an echo. Um, there shouldn't be. I went into OBS and I muted something just now if, if it's still echoing I don't know hmm <laughs> can listen back to the feed I guess Let's yeah see. is it Ella is that it I have no clue I mean I know you know it's only people with kids well people with kids or some of the gentlemen that we text and try to talk to on this show are yeah. familiar with Frozen, probably. Uh, and now! You uh, guys are... Frozen, it's... it's uh, Yeah, it, it was... um had something unmuted for some reason. So. And OBS? Yeah. Ah. Uh, well, you should have sang... Ch -ch 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 changes <laughs> The archive version won't have that. The YouTube does. Yeah. Uh, BB says Danimals or Granimals? Uh, Danimals. But I do have news. Granimals still exist. You know what those are, Kira? No. Actually, I'm not positive what they're... Oh, I know there's some kind of clothing for toddlers. It's like a brand or something. I'm a big kid. Yep. Little fella's a big kid. It's his song. Look what I can do. I can wear big kid pants too. Very big kid. 
Anyway, Brian Funkles. Um, I like how Magnum and Sloth that are our avatar there. Uh, the, I I forget what the term is for the uh, backlighting. Maybe it's backlit. I don't know. There, I think there's a term for that. But I like how it's that green that's around him. Patrick would definitely know if he were on that asshole. Do you know what it is? Fuck you, you asshole! I don't know. <laughs> is uh, what is that from? <laughs> is it from uh, two weeks? Yes. Okay. Two weeks. <laughs> I saw a GIF of that <laughs> the other day. It was possibly on Reddit or something, but. I just saw like the, you know, thumbnail of the GIF, and I thought I don't even need to click on that. I know what it, it is. <laughs> you, were, you were talking about big necks the other day. She gets a big neck at that, at that part. <laughs> she gets a. Uh, well, I'm not gonna make that joke. Never mind. Pardon. Oh, <laughs> Panasonic Platinum, I believe, is what that was. That's what he said, yeah. That's my favorite, uh, uh, shit, what's the band? Earth, Wind, and Fire? I always want to call them Blood, Sweat, and Tears, but I know <laughs> it's not them. Yeah, it's a commercial that we might be hearing later. But for now... Come on! Are you ready to party? Gentlemen, don't be far behind! Let's party! <laughs> Gentlemen, don't be far behind. Let's party. A certain fan provided that whistle. We won't say who. A fan of the show? Yes. Mm-hmm. Fun fact, it was a rape whistle. Oh my goodness. Well, that makes the song all that much better, then. Uh, actually, I had a... I was a kid, and I got this whistle at some random event. It was like one of those they used to have these like in my hometown they would have like these uh festivals that I don't know, it's it's hard to fucking explain. But it was uh just these like meet up type things but they'd have like stuff for kids, you know. And they'd have like little carnival games and stuff, and you'd win these bullshit little toys and stuff. And mm -hmm. I think that's where I got this, but it was like. It was one of those whistles, but it said something on it, and it was basically a rape whistle. You know what a rape whistle is? I'm assuming yeah. everybody. Like you're supposed to blow it if you're getting raped, and I'm not making light of that, but. It said something on it that, like, indicated that that's what it was for, and I remember, like, as a kid, and I think wow. Patrick probably explained it to me, because he was, you know, the older brother, but it was something Buster, it, it had, like, this graphic, this, like, font on it that was all, like, jerky, herky-jerky font, like, extreme, and it was, like, the... I mean, obviously not rape buster, but it was something like that. And I remember, like, wondering why it said that, and then Patrick sort of explained it to me, like... Anyway, yeah. And that's probably still around. Either me or Patrick probably still has it. Oh, that's a nice prize for a little kid. Yeah. 
Right. Now that we well. have the context, I need to listen again. Come on! Are you ready to party? So the whistle is not being blown by the gentleman that's addressing other gentlemen about partying. It's being blown by someone else, unfortunately, who knows what might be about to possibly happen. I'm sorry. We let's not. Yeah, let's not do this. He's a Pringles enthusiast. Who is? <laughs> The whistleblower, whose name I will not mention. Or I'll just type it in the chat. In the YouTube chat? No. Zoom. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. You get it now? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. I'd forgotten about that. Sorry, folks. Inside baseball. Are you high? Spe no, not yet. Drunk? Nah, well, I don't know. You, do I seem drunk? Buzzed, maybe. Yeah, I'm in a good place. Good. Kind of. Except I need to piss. Okay. I'm going to do that right now in my pants. Um, no, I, we need to hear the Mandel <laughs> toilet. The Mandel machine. Hey, who else? Uh, show of hands. Who misses hearing the Mandel machine when I used to... When I used to use my phone to broadcast from. Yeah, that's something that went the way of the dodo. At least for now. I went and got myself a fancy microphone that I can't carry into the... I mean, I could carry it into the bathroom, but it's on a... It's on a mount. So... Gentlemen, don't be far behind. Let's get ready to mount. Right now at McDonald's, we've got a surprise. You can mm. get a personal... Sir, with all due respect, this is the worst surprise I've ever experienced. It's not exciting at all. Why does the beginning sound like a Christmas song, like Jingle Bells? <laughs> right yeah. now at McDonald's, we've got a surprise. You can mm. get a personal... Si like it's a holiday commercial yeah. or something. Yeah, it almost sounds like the beginning of... Uh... It is the Christmas vacation! Oh my god. It is ha! ha! Get yourself up for a Christmas vacation! That was very quick. Thanks to our donators for this computer. It's that time! Christmas time is here! Everybody knows that... Okay. Is that a woman or... A oh, man. Uh, it says Mavis Staples. Let me see. Probably a probably a woman. Let's look. Only man named Mavis I ever heard of was in a country song. <laughs> yeah, it's a woman. I don't know. That's just when I have watched that as an adult. The whole movie is great, but that's like the the very at least it you get it over with at the beginning. But that's the part that's like that doesn't uh, what do you call it? Doesn't hold up. <laughs> it reminds you that it took place at the very end of the eighties. <laughs> yeah. Or you know that it just sounds exactly like nineteen eighty nine, or was it eighty eight? It's eighty nine. Yeah. Well, there's some... At least you get to ogle some Johnny Galecki in his prime. By that, I mean, you know, what, 13-year-old or whatever <laughs> he was. Yeah. 
I just watched um, a made-for-TV movie, and he was in it. It was from 1990. Um, ah. It was this. Tonight, on the ABC Saturday Night Movie. Why? She had the perfect career, the perfect marriage, until her husband betrayed her. Don't touch me! And when the other woman showed up dead... They lifted Robert's prints off it. I did not kill Claudia. She was the only lawyer who could set him free. I never stopped loving you. Spare me. What would you do? Judith Light. There's nobody else. Michael Ankeen. Jerry Orbach. <laughs> In defense of a married man. The mom from... Who's the boss? <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the sheriff from uh, Twin Peaks. Uh, who else was it? Um, the boyfriend of uh, Darlene from Roseanne. And who was the other person? Uh, Tonight, I'm dead. But... <laughs> Judith Light. There's nobody else. Michael Ankeen. Jerry Orbach. Oh, the detective from Law and Order. Yeah. R.I.P. I believe. Yeah, a redacted is saying what I was about to say. Michael Ontkeen retired from acting and basically pulled a Rick Moranis uh, when they did new episodes of Twin Peaks. He was like the one person that they that wouldn't be on it. That's, like, uh, that sucks. Yeah, Bill Bill fucking Murray agreed to to be in the. Ghostbusters and Rick Moranis wouldn't. And I I think I've said this before on the show, but they uh he held out for so long and then you know, Harold Ramos passed away and it all got fucked up. I still haven't seen that new newest Ghostbusters movie, but I haven't either. <laughs> uh Redacted says Jerry Orbach retired from living. Oh Very true. Um, be right back. Michael Aunt Keen. Um, I know he did some. He did some movies in the '90s because I used to. Okay. Used to see his name in like, back you know when, cable had the, uh, when they first had the info on the screen for whatever movie was on, you know? Yeah. And I would see, like, these random movies, and it would be, like, something starring Michael Aunt Keen. And I always thought that was a weird name, of course. I think he's Canadian. I think it's one of those weird Canadian names. Yeah, it sounds like something like that. Oh, man. What if Ernie Anderson was alive and he did um, what's that service that you pay? Some? Cameo. Yeah, if he did cameo, ah, that'd be great. Tonight on Pran Funkles. I don't know Pran Funkles. It's the man you can get anything. I was listening to that commercial. I was just imagining Ernie Anderson sitting there with. A lit cigar and like a glass of whiskey recording that voiceover. Like, I don't know if he did either of those things, but I get the feeling he, he did. Possibly. I don't know. Tonight, Tom Saltermeyer, PhD. <laughs> I don't all know. SG Associates. Yeah. Do you have that commercial? Um, yeah. I don't know if Somewhere. we've heard that recently. But thanks to BBE for setting it up. Yeah, thank you. Does the company's new jingle sound a little too close to a song you wrote? Has an impatient customer service rep not given you the time of day? Maybe a middle-aged air conditioning installer hit on your daughter. Or has a loved one received substandard ravioli for dinner? 
Well, your problems are over. The professionals at Salter Meyer and Gladstone have the experience, understated good looks, and ruthless savvy to win over any judge, jury, or paranoid mother-in-law. Our founders have over 25 years in doctoral coursework and have clean felony records in 45 states. So to speak with Tom Saltermeyer, PhD, or Stephanie Gladstone, PhD, drop by our 34 Remington Park or 123 Wonder Lane offices or email us at feltapplejacks at webtv.net. But wait, there's more. The first 10 new clients who mention this commercial will receive either a $100 Amazon gift card, void in Wisconsin, or an 8x10 glossy photograph of Jim Carrey as the Joker. Don't wait. Call today. Nothing. Nothing like this horrible place. It was horrible. Horrible. What are we listening to here? Hello? Sorry. Was that the uh, Greg soundboard? Ravioli! Two pieces of god awful, horrible ravioli with shit on top of (laughs) (laughs) Well, the voiceover woman was. She did a great job. And, of course, the writing that BB did was great on that Uh, they both nailed it yeah and I from the from the Cran Punkles okay maybe I'm getting drunk yeah I don't think you know anything about cranberries I don't think I do what do you know about cranberries what do you know about cranberries not as much as I know about computers. What do you know about cranberries? The time. What do you know about cranberries? The time. It's on. Is that what she's saying? The time. Oh, okay. As in Morris Day, and the time. Mm-hmm. As in Morris the cat. And nine lives. As in, you look out your snowy window and you envision a pool. Melikimaka uh-huh. is a thing to say. Who was the woman in that scene? It seems like she was kind of random. Let me look. I think she's a model. Run in Christmas vacation pool. Nicolette Scorsese. Oh, probably related to a certain individual, maybe. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see if she is not overdosed on heroin in the meantime since '89. Uh, probably not. That seems like I saw something about her in that scene not too long ago. Hmm. She doesn't have a Wikipedia. There's an IMDP. Born 1954. Um. I'll just send you her IMDB and you can... So she was like three. She was about 34 <laughs> years old when they filmed that scene. Yes, sir. I always enjoy that scene because the aforementioned Juan Galecki as Rusty is in that scene. And yeah. I think he 
catches his dad staring at her, and then they just both stare at her and having a an agreed a mutual agreement or something. Uh, I don't think that happens. <laughs> oh, not that. Yeah, no, I just they're agreeing that she, you know, they're she's worth staring at. You know what I'm saying? Take it, I got bought it. Classic rock all day. That is a great movie, though. Yes. I saw it in a full theater, and that made it even more funny because everybody was just dying. I don't think I did because I probably wasn't old enough at the time to legally. Not that that mattered back then, but the first time I saw it was like on, you know, NBC or something where it was severely edited down. Oh. And then years later I would see it on cable and and realize he says some naughty words in this. Well, yeah, but it's only PG, so, isn't it? Ah, that's probably PG-13, because, like, the rant that he does about his boss toward the end, he... Yeah, he says, well, he says F word, I think, once. It's then... it's hard to say, because uh, also back then, there wasn't so, such an emphasis on naughty words causing a film to have a R rating, you know? Like movies could have a PG, but also possibly have. I don't know if they, if a fuck automatically got you a. It seems like there were like movies that were PG 13 that had fuck in them. Yeah, you can say fuck in PG 13, just like not a lot. And there's like movies that, that showed uh, bottoms that were probably like PG, possibly a errant nipple or something that might have still been PG back then, not now. And then you could rip out somebody's heart, and that was Well, PG. yeah, that's... It could still be rated G with that. I mean, that's just violence. No harm in that. You know the reference I'm making? I can... I'm only thinking of uh, the kids in the hall right now. Mm-mm. Which is not a movie, so obviously it's not that. Well, Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom. And the Pimple of Gents. Yes. 1984, I think, and that was PG. Yeah. And then after that, I think that is actually what caused the PG-13 from that point. Because <laughs> they didn't yeah. have it yet. And then, then they did. That sounds about right. What's wrong? Expected? <laughs> Membership given the whole. That it is indeed. Jelly of the month. Clark. But... This isn't the biggest bag over the head punch in the face I ever got. God damn it! Son. Clark. Hey, If you are looking for any last-minute gift ideas for me, I have one. I like Frank Shirley, my boss, right here tonight. I want him brought from his happy holiday slumber over there in Melody Lane with all the other rich people. And I want him brought right here with a big ribbon on his head. And I want to look him straight in the eye and I want to tell him what a cheap, lying, no good, rotten, four flushing, low life, snake licking, dirt eating, inbred, overstuffed, ignorant, blood. Sucking, dog kissing, brainless, dickless, hopeless, heartless, fat ass, bug eyed, stiff legged, spotty lip, worm headed sack of monkey shit he is. Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the so Tylenol? No, fucks. no. It's dick so. and shit. 
Maybe it was PG or, or PG-13. I don't know. I think it's PG, like, to be a family movie. Brian Doyle Murray. <laughs> Should we make some well, Brian Funkles? If you want to see uh, Randy Quaid's dick, I believe he... I believe he posted that online or something. Didn't he post, like, nude pics or something? <laughs> oh my god, that's the last, he's, last nude person. He's fucking person. crazy now, apparently, as we all know. Wow. Let's all take a look at Randy Quaid's dick. Hmm. Or no, I think it was like a sex tape with his wife or something. Dick! This is it, Clark? Rock, roll, and forget Randy Quaid's dick. <laughs> you want to make that a was uh, call? Dick Clark had a show in addition to Countdown America on the radio. He also had a show called Rock, Roll, and Remember for a while. Or he'd uh, play like oldies. And I used to listen to it and enjoy it. But uh, Patrick had a joke one time that we went to the we were at this party and they had like a marker board wait, wait, or something. You, hang on one second. <laughs> you're at you're at a party, right? Let me... Yeah, and it sounded like this. Yeah, Miles might have been there with us and he probably he might remember this but uh they had like a marker or chalkboard i think it was like a marker board in their in their kitchen on the wall and uh patrick wrote dick clark's rock roll and forget where you put the barbecue sauce <laughs> on it <laughs> this is before all the strokes so it wasn't a joke about that it was just you know based on remember you know the opposite of remember is forget, folks. That's the joke. Not that Dick Clark had many <laughs> strokes. We're not making light of that. No. And we're not making light of rape whistles tonight on Prey and Funkles. This, did anybody except you guys appreciate that being written? I don't think so. I think I remember... I was probably drunk. I vaguely remember pointing it out to people because I just wanted to see people's reaction... And I think I remember somebody reading it out loud and just being like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Mm. And then there was, uh, speaking of gentlemen, there was a guy creepily sitting in a chair in the living room at this party that... Uh, <laughs> His name was oh, Kenneth. Me. Ah, you're close. <laughs> yes, he was, uh, there was, like, a girl that was, like, passed out or something, and he was just, like, sitting there staring at her for the entire time we were at this party. He was a very creepy individual that, probably the kind of guy that sprawls out on his bed with paper towels supporting his gut. <laughs> Now, for the Pran Funkles Creep of the Week. That, uh, Miles kept, like, popping into the living room and just yelling, Kenneth! Kenneth! <laughs> like that. <laughs> Kenneth! Like the My Product guy, uh -huh. pretty much. And Kenneth was not amused by that. But it was, like, really creepy. It was like he was waiting for everyone to leave so he could, like, pounce on this passed out oh, girl or something. God. I don't know. That's just kind of what it... Yeah, there was... I don't know. Brian Funkles. Live? I gotta step away now that I've creeped everyone out. Here is the aforementioned Creep of the Week. Mm. You sound so hot. Oh, it's 
millionaire bored. I'm watching porn. Keep on creeping. Fran Funkles will be right back after this commercial message. Ken versus Ford Ranger, folks, in the dash from destruction. A test of getaway acceleration between two compact pickups, each with biggest available engine and automatic. Which one has the power to win? Chevy's bigger V6 is already pulling away from Ford and that runaway dynamite car. Chevy S10 has the power to get away, but Ford doesn't. No wonder, when it comes to pickups, America's having a change of heart. The heartbeat of America, that's today's Chevy truck. The countdown begins Monday at 11 a.m. C minus 12 and counting. For just 10 hours, you'll find astronomical savings on TVs, VCRs, and appliances in every Circuit City store. C minus 6. Save on this Scott programmable compact disc player, just $119. This Panasonic phone answering machine, now a low $69. But remember, it's happening Monday only. The Circuit City 10-hour sale. that a woman got this picture, not a guy. So let me grab it here. This is this chick, she's all tattooed. She has long brown hair. And a mesh or something type of top where you can see her boobs and nipples, and I think those are like yoga shorts or something she's wearing. What's going on? I'm describing the text that a certain individual got from a woman with a sh <laughs> see-through shirt. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a, just a complete boob showing. Yeah. I mean, it's covered in mesh, I guess. Yeah. It says Cheryl here, wondering if you, y e w, have any plans later. I'd love L u v to see you again, Leyland. But it looks so incredibly fake that this is probably Leland sent to like Polymer, probably. This is probably sent to like a million people, just for them to reply and go, 
Well, I'm not Leland, but yeah. <laughs> I'm Leland Palmer. Laura's dad. <laughs> Twin Peaks? I'm gonna dance around and look crazy for a minute. Would you like to get in a threesome with me and Bob? I don't even know what you guys look like, so... Okay, let's call... Cheryl? Oh, I was gonna say, I never got to the Pranfunkel's correction, but I'll make it quick. Okay. The, uh, the other person who wouldn't do the new episodes of Twin Peaks was the little person, individual type of guy. Oh, man. <laughs> because it was like, he didn't like the... It was against his religion or something like that, apparently. If Great. I remember correctly. Okay. I didn't, I only saw like the first episode. I haven't gotten a chance to watch those. But, uh... Oh, and also, by the way, R.I.P. The guy who played Wyndham Earl recently, I think, passed away. But he was, uh... I think he was in his 80s, so, you know. Anyway... <laughs> Ooh, it pulled out the disc system for him. Yep, it's the equivalent of, like, the red carpet. That's better than what Randy Quaid pulled out. Yeah. Anybody want to see a sex tape of him and his wife? No. Well, Anybody? I, I personally do not, no. Show of hands. Got some lotion for that hand? Okay, sorry. Let's make a call. Okay, maybe I, if anybody answers, Tom could, or somebody, just 16-ounce shake guy or something. <laughs> okay. <Not> text. Nail subscriber, you have won. You have bobbled a blah 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 blah. The person you are calling is currently unavailable. Please leave a message after the tone. Thank you. <laughs> One thing. <laughs> right, guard. Uh, the legend of Curly's right guard. Think again, man. Was it right guard? Oh. What was it? Um, if I can pull it up, I'll tell you. Brute. It was, Brute it was an aftershave. I could have sworn it was right guard. What's the actor's name? Paul? Or, uh, Jack, Jack Pounce. Here we go. I don't need some fancy cologne to tell me I'm a man. I use Skin Bracer. It smells great. But it also cools and tones my skin. Confidence is very sexy. Don't you think? Original and cooling blue. By Menon. Well. Uh, you know who I think wrote? But that... You know who pe that put a pen to paper and spent hours upon hours writing by Menon? Who? I could be wrong, but I believe it's Mr. Holmes. Oh my god. I want to hear his, like, 100 piece orchestra version of that one second song, please. Nah, uh, well, I'm seeing here it's, uh, it's not him. If the first thing that comes up on Google is correct, and it always fucking is, assholes. Whoever posted that was a... Uh... <laughs> As a Clark, Dick Clark Productions. Um... Why did that kid say Deke? My name is Dick. <laughs> As a Clark, rock and roll and forget where you put your dick. <laughs> All right. 
Ludacarl says, hand up. He oh. wants to see Randy Quaid's sex tape. Well, you gotta B- do that. BB, sa- BB says, uh, Randy Quaid jacking off whilst Randy Newman sings and plays accompaniment. Uh. And company B is a, a bugle boy wearing an individual in company B. While listening, and all this is happening with a um, ghetto blaster with company B. <laughs> What was that? Company B, the band. Uh, but it's slowed down, obviously. That's a, you know, I wait. I'm gonna go back and make a prompt for Night Cafe with what we just said, like later when I listen back. That's a good idea. Make a note of that. I don't have Write to. Write in your copy book. I'll just listen back and, and do it. That's when I make my notes. When I'm sober yeah. and at work and listening back. Yep. And then I forget about those notes. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, do we want to call this number back? It's not Google Voice, so it's not a certain fella doing it, I don't think. What, the number we just called? Yeah. Yeah. But, do you want to call it back, or just... A certain fella? Mm Mm-hmm. Like the... The one in question, or...? Let's go to commercial break. Okay. We'll be right back. Everybody has sunglasses, but most sunglasses make things darker and are useless when it comes to blinding glare. Not these. Nick Bolton here with the latest from Bell and Howell. We oh call man, him trust Tack him, glasses. I just drove by. Inspired by the sunglasses worn by our heroes in uniform, Tack glasses can do things no ordinary sunglasses can do, like block blinding glare so well, invisible objects suddenly become visible. Enhance colors to give you vision as sharp as an eagle's and survive even the harshest conditions. I like how the truck Look, driving by is a key just with make the things music. darker, which could be deadly in a tactical situation. But tack glasses improve optical clarity so you can see clearly even in low light. If you've never seen how this light filtering technology works, check this out. Nothing to see, right? But look again as we hold up our tack glasses. A colorful American eagle's reveal. Amazing. Look at the screen. Yes. What do you see? I see a white screen. Just a That's a two-man fucking. Now we're going to do our sunglasses. Whoa, this is cool. How does it do that? That is so awesome. Whoa. What? Oh, my. Whoa, what? That is so cool. That is amazing. How does it do that? It's like an eagle pops out of nowhere. Very, very cool. Whether you're on the trail an or on the golf pops course, out of my pants. on the water or on the slopes, with tack glasses, you'll always see clearly without any glare. There's just nothing like them on the market today. So, did this number call recently, Kira? Um, different number. I, th- I think we're talking about different numbers. I'm talking oh, about okay. the, the text. The all subscriber. So let's move on. So we're not going to call it? We did, but it was just a voicemail. Do you want to call again? I thought that was the tit out. Yeah, that's what I'm talking number. about. Oh. Oh, you think maybe that's from the same... Could be. Oh, that's good thinking there. Yeah. You want to move on? No, we could... I mean, yeah, it's up to you. I don't care. Let's move on. Um, I'm getting some horny I could have sworn Jack Palance did a right guard, but that definitely sounds like the commercial I remember. Because there's a whole lot of. (laughs) (laughs) 
No, I looked it up. I can't find anything with right guard. Oh, by the way, I don't know if we talked about this on the show. In the Pranfunkles R.I.P. department, we need a jingle for that at this point. I know. Uh, I guess when you talk about references from the 80s, the actors from those references are going to start dying. But, uh, Remo Williams, the adventure ends. <laughs> Mr. Ward, Mr. Fred Ward, who's... Did we talk about this on the show? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Did we talk about Wilford being his boss or something? Mm. I was Remo Williams' boss or something. I was wearing suspenders and the members only jacket and the same fucking shit I'm wearing in every movie <laughs> and I was getting the shit kicked out of me <laughs> literally okay. recycled oats coming out of my asshole we're getting a little blue or brown tonight on, on the show I'm All right, receiving sorry. Receiving some horny texts right now. Oh. Well, we, we Grand Funkles is, that is, one of the guys we're going to call later. We need to call a gentleman who uses a roll of paper towels to absorb the sweat coming off of them. We could, but he quit responding, so I didn't have him on the list. Hmm. Well, let's make a call. Request from BB, a person, a guy, guy named Maja. <laughs> His first name is Maja. I don't know if that's how you say it, but he would like it's us spelled to... just like we spell it. Yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. I, th I now I remember this coming up. I don't know if it actually got called. BB said it was a episode that Justin and Patrick did while I was away, and I'm not sure if they called it or just talked about it, but. I think we should try to call him. Okay. So now, now folks, it's an actual man that, uh, you know, BB found him. His name is, is Mozart. Oh, he, he just sent a picture. Uh oh. It's actually a pretty hot. <laughs> ready to party. Yeah. Oh, I gotta, I gotta see this. It's actually hot. Okay. Hang on. Can you, can you share it on our stream? <laughs uh, Tom, uh, Tom might advise against that. Yeah, I don't. Even though he's not an attorney. I'm sending it in the Zoom chat. All right, I'm got my lotion ready. Well, I think it's hot. <laughs> it's uh. Okay, I have to download it. And it's Wait, not letting me. I'm not, this isn't supposed to happen on a prank call show. I'm not supposed to, like, want the victims. It's not letting me save the file. Maybe I need to put .jpg. After, no, still not letting me. Oh, maybe it's where I'm trying to... I'll try, try that BMP. <laughs> that's uh, what I... That's what we days. have. Me and... Me and Greg on the Windows 3.1. Okay, I saved it. Now I need to open it. I've got to find it. Oh, that's funny, because literally it's like asking me what I should open the file with, and my mouse was on Microsoft Paint. Because <laughs> I was thinking, you know, bitmaps, you, you would open them in Paint. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I guess I'll open it and paint. Oh god, it's zoomed way in. <laughs> it's a very high resolution. I don't see looks like his shirt. Yeah. I'm debating whether to scroll down. Okay. Yeah, well I like it. <laughs> 
it's it's a gentleman in his underwear. <laughs> That's all I see. Yeah, it's just um kind of like from the ribs to the down to halfway down the thigh section. A tight know. shirt and boxer briefs. It's not not a lot of definition. I can't. I can't particularly make out the head of his penis in this picture. <laughs> I, I do have a, I do have a, 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 pardon the pun, a bone to pick with the uh, light switch plate mm-hmm. in the background there. Oh, I don't uh, like it. You install those on a routine basis? I, I know, but I just, I have an eye for uh, decor. Not only do I not like it, it looks like one of those that was originally like fake chrome colored and then it got painted over with white paint and they painted over the screws and the light switch itself, which of course is a big no-no. I'm going to zoom in look at that. Yeah, like the screws are obviously painted over. And... Yeah, they're like coated. It's not the same paint. color as the wall. No. But at the same time, like, take that shit off and, I don't know, don't paint over the screws with it installed. That's just, to me, you know what that screams? This man is renting. Mm-hmm. And I'm judging him for that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm renting. I mean, soon that's the only thing any of us will be able to do. Okay. I love America. <sighs> Let's make a prank call. I'll shut the fuck up. Um, okay. BB wants us to call Muzha as Mr. and Mrs. M- Muzha. <laughs> Abercrombie and Fitch. Oh, BB sent a picture and text that he got. Let me send that to you. You'll like this one better, probably. Yeah, if it's Felicia. No. Take a look. (laughs) It's just a number and a naughty picture. I hope it's Dennis. No, it's naughty Denise. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I just accidentally uh, opened the same picture again. (laughs) Yeah, I'm enjoying that more. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Does Tom want to call her? Yeah. Or sixty pounds <laughs> shake. <laughs> I, know. I think I see some areola in there. Okay, three one five. I, I don't know if it's nip, but it's areola. Okay. From the aerial view that I'm looking at it from. Let's see. If anybody answers... Okay, here we go. Now, once again, looking at the background in that picture, mm-hmm. looks like it's in an apartment. All right, what was the area code? 313... or 315. Where is that? Let me check. Upstate? Downstate? East State, West State, Syracuse. Wow, I was close. I guess I don't know. The number you are trying to reach is no longer in service. Oh shit! Yeah, she gets you all hard, and then you call, and it's disconnected. Is she wearing like a hoodie? With the nothing um, under it? Let me see. It's kind of what it looks like. Yeah. Or she might have like a short shirt and it's pulled up. It might be a poncho. Yeah. It might be a chips uh, poncho. It might be a nacho man. Okay, um, 
so it's called Muzha as Mr. and Mrs. Muzha. And that's us? Yeah. Okay. Muzha, 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 just make a call. Muzha, wait for wish. The person you are trying to reach is not accepting calls at this time. Please try your call again later. La persona con la que... Sorry about that, BB. Um, do you remember the guy, Damon, that we called about the Mercedes? Uh huh. I want to call him again. And say, I think we got disconnected last time, but I'm still interested in that Mercedes. Yes, let's do that. Okay, let's call from a different number because I think he blocked us. He was in Hawaii. Yeah. Call from this one. Hello. Hi, Tab Saldivar, PhD. Uh, I was calling in regards to the uh, vehicle that's for sale. Hello. Hi, can you hear me okay? Uh, barely, go ahead. Hi, I was calling in regards to the Mercedes for sale. Okay. Can you tell me about it? I think yeah. I spoke with you before and we got disconnected at some point accidentally. For oh, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 not on I, purpose. I actually, it, it, it's kind of, it basically kind of sold to this guy that's supposed to come get it tomorrow, so... Maybe check it in a couple uh, of days if, if I didn't sell it. I, well, I, I mean, I wouldn't be too sure about that until it's actually been, you know, he's, if he's, oh, you son of a gun, you piece of feces. I'm sure he's telling the God on this truth. Yeah. Well, let's give him a call back. Tell him what's the highest bid and all. Yeah. I was, I was going to get to that. I was going to be like, wow, well, don't be too sure until you got the cash in hand. What was that? It's another prank phone. Pick up, hang up. Pick up, hang up. Pick up, hang up. <laughs> it's another. Sir, just one second. It's <sighs> okay, I can't, I can't leave a message. So, eh. All right, this is the man who can get anything. <laughs> this guy. Okay, we've been trying for weeks to get a Gucci bag from him. Well, and. He, he called back once and didn't leave a message, doesn't answer, but we've been texting a lot with him, so let's see. Going back to May 10th and finishing just a few hours ago. Still waiting to hear back from you, from you about the Gucci bag. Thanks, Tom. Mm -hmm. Gucci, Gucci, Goo. Are you serious about it? I wasn't sure with the 3 a.m. calls. Where are you located? Tom? Yes, I've been trying to contact you for a few weeks and never got a response. I'm in Pittsburgh. He said, where at in Pittsburgh? Tom, downtown? He said, call me. Tom, I'm with a client and can't speak on the phone right now. I'll call you when I can. And then, let's see. 
uh, okay, this is a Google Voice number. What's your actual phone number? And then respond. So what's your real number since this is a Google Voice number? We didn't respond. You still want that Gucci bag, quote unquote, Tom? <laughs> and then a couple days later, we said, I use Google Voice to protect myself from weirdos. I only give my actual number to people who earn my trust. And if I'm being honest here, it's a little creepy that you're obviously looking up my number online to get information from me, when all I wanted to do was talk to you and see where, <laughs> see where it goes. <laughs> I think Patrick thought this was a chat line guy. Yeah, so we were, we were conversing about what to say back to this guy, and I think Patrick thought it was like a chat line guy. And yeah. So, to say that, and then Kira said that to him. Yeah. Not that it matters. No, not really. And so he said, what would you do if you got calls from a number at 2.30 to 3.30 a.m. every other weekend? You wouldn't look up their info? I only look up people to protect myself from weirdos as well. And we didn't respond. And he said, so explain the 2.30 to 3.30 a.m. every other weekend calls. And we just said, ah, I see your point, bye. And then he said, so are you going to explain calling at all those times? Or just fade off into the darkness, Tommy? Didn't respond, and he said, why was Tommy Sato Mayor <laughs> calling me at 2.30 to 3.30 a.m.? every other weekend. Why, oh why, Tommy? And we said, I'm sorry, I have a disorder where I can only talk to people at night. And that was the last of it. You do? I just noticed something. Could you stand over here a minute, sir? Just for a second. What was that? What, 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 what would you do? <laughs> yeah, but what is it? What show is it? It's a, sh it's a show called what, 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 what would you do with Mark Summers? Okay, so it's like that kind of show. Okay. Hi, I'm Mark Summers, and this is What Would You Do? Thanks, Mark. It's a show that uh, Pat, me and Patrick were watching in reruns at one point. They would show it on, like, the there was, like, a the game show channel on cable for a while. I don't know if it's still there, because I haven't had cable in 15 years, but, uh, it was just like a crappy Nickelodeon show that Mark Summers did after Double Dare. And there was, I don't know how often this happened, but they had like one of the episodes, they would just do these like stupid uh, games and stuff with the audience members. And one of them like, it was like musical chairs or something. And the person who won, like, their prize was... Because it was, like, musical chairs, and they were, like, sitting on pies or something <laughs> like that. And their the prize that the person won was an apple pie. Was it obnoxiously handed over? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> it's like, you've won this apple pie! So that was... That's where that's from. That's a... Yeah, that was a real... Thing I thought happened. it was a totally made up. <laughs> uh, we've I've, Kira's heard about this before, but you know. Wow, that's impressive. I don't know why. It was pretty much like Mark Summers farting around after the 
they had to stop doing Double Dare, maybe because he wanted to stop doing it, I don't know. Of course, the story with him is he, much like Mr. Mandel, he has OCD. Mm -hmm. So hosting a show like Double Dare was like torture for him. Oh, God. Oh, so they didn't fire him for using marijuana? Oh, oh they might have. Mm -hmm. What is that? What's the reference? Oh, just how... Everybody was so anti-drug back then. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't know if Mark Summers has ever smoked pot. I don't know. What would you do if you were Mark Summers and you were offered pot? Oh, man, I'd just smoke that shit, man. <laughs> it was me and Patrick described it as just Mark Summers farting around. Because that's pretty much what it was. Well, it must be if the prize is a pie. Yeah. It, it, Mark Summers would just, like, ask people questions in the audience. Oh, it was audience-based? So, like, yeah, he'd just oh. be like, oh, what would you do in this situation? Mm -hmm. And, of course, in uh, recent years, there there's a show on CBS or something where it's, like, a hidden, hidden camera and, like, uh, you know, testing people's honesty. Like somebody dropped a twenty dollar bill or something, and can you believe that this person just picked it up and left and didn't try to find the owner and yeah, stuff like that? <laughs> Excuse me, is this your, is this your government owned piece of paper? Man, the government doesn't own me, man. <laughs> Alright, is Tom ready to try to get his Gucci yes. bag? Well, I wonder yes. if he'll be a super smart ass and pick up the phone this time. Let's find out. Let's call from the correct number, first of all. Wait a minute. Yeah, that is the correct number. That's funny. When you slouch in your chair, the colors change on the screen. Okay, here we go. <laughs> When I slouch. You know when you're looking at a screen and you move, like, to the side or up and down, it changes color. If it's an RGB CR. Please leave your message for... For... How do I enable screen sharing? Ah. Uh, something at the top. I mean, I it think. should already be enabled and I shouldn't have to waste time doing this. Thanks. Well, by default, apparently it disables it because we have this problem every time. Screen, share screen options. Multiple dart participants can share simultaneously. Let's go to advanced. Okay, who can share? All participants. Who can start sharing when someone else is sharing? All participants. Okay. Alright, can you see it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you see this lady? It would be Bertha if she gained 200 pounds, yes. And that lady? I like his shirt. That guy? Wow. There's a guy wearing a tank top. Well, I guess I'm going to record a television program with Mark Summers. Guess I better put on the black tank top. <laughs> There's a fella sitting in front of Mark Summers. <laughs> and look at that shirt Mark's wearing. Are you high yet? Not yet. I did eat something, so it'll be very soon. Well, when you are, you need to look at his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a circuit board or something. Yeah? Like that Windows Plus 
screensaver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, that whole theme. The kid on the left looks like the thumbs up fella from the yeah. apple. <laughs> Brent yeah. Rambo. Yeah, and then uh, behind him and to the right of Mark Summers is um, that girl from Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wow. folks, I'm sorry. That's not very... Uh, Martha Plimpton's in the foreground. Okay. Well, Let's make some Brent Vogel. Brent Rambo gives thumbs up. Let's call back the man who can get anything. Stop showering. chair has a lot to say. Is it Jerry from PB's Playhouse? <laughs> Please leave your message for... Alright, you want to leave him a message? Uh, if you think we should. Yeah, I about the um Gucci bag. Good. Please leave your message for four one. Tablet, sorry. To replay your message, press one. Sorry. To continue okay. recording, press I'll two. To delete and re-record your message, press three. For delete, your message has been deleted. Please re-record your message at the tone. Hi, Tom Salter, my PhD. I was just. Calling in regards to the Gucci bag that I'm trying to get for my wife. I've been relentlessly trying to contact you for quite a while now. It seems like you're being evasive. And I don't appreciate it. It's starting to make me become a little suspicious of what you do, sir. And... I hate to say it, I uh, once I become suspicious of what you're doing, it's, well, things tend to go a little awry from that point on. But let's just try to correct our course. Let's try to get, you know, kind of try to line our, uh, line our things up and figure out how we can, uh, make this transaction occur. I believe that you said you can supply me with what I'm looking for. And I'm trying to get one of these for my wife. It's the Gucci bag. Let's put our best feet forward here. Give me a call back. I think it'll give you a leg up if you can get me one of these bags, sir. I can certainly put you in touch with some other people who might be interested in some things if you know what I mean I'm, I'm not to... give me a call back uh, area code 402 882 2083 Tom Saltmeyer PhD love you a lot to replay your message press 1 to continue recording press 2 to delete and re-record your message at the tone, please continue recording your message. Love you a lot. To replay your message, press 1. To continue recording at the tone, please continue recording your message. To replay your message, 
Press 1 to con- Hi, Tom Salter by PhD. I was just calling in regards to the Gucci bag that I'm trying to get for my wife. I've been relentlessly trying to contact you for quite a while now. It seems like you're being evasive. And I don't appreciate it. It's starting to make me become a little suspicious of what you do, sir. And I hate to say it, I once I become suspicious of what you're doing, it's well, things tend to go a little awry from that point on. But let's just try to correct our course. Let's try to get, you know, kind of try to line our uh, line our things up and figure See, out how runs we can longer. Uh, make this transaction occur. I believe that you said you can supply me with what I'm looking for, and I'm trying to get one of these for my wife. It's the Gucci bag. Let's put our best feet forward here. Give me a call back. I think it'll give you a leg up if you can get me one of these bags, or I can certainly put you in touch with some other people who might be interested in some things, if you know what I mean. Give me a call back. Uh, area code 402-882-2000. Tom Saltermeyer, Ph.D. Love you a lot. To replay your... <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to hear me take a swig of beer. <laughs> Message was, was sealed with a kiss. And seal it with the kills. I wonder if that message will make him sweat a little since he sounds pretty shady with what he does. And seal it with the kills. And if he does sweat, well, maybe it would sound something like this. A copyrighted song was played here. I may have mentioned this on the show before, but when I was in a middle school band and percussion, we uh, we would play that song. We had like the sheet music. Yeah. And uh, it was marching band, and I had I was. My uh, my job was when we did that song. I was like the bitch, who, one of the bitches who had to hold the. I was I was on crash cymbals and I had to hold the cymbals together so that the snare drum players could like hit it like it was a you know hi hat or whatever. <laughs> You're the drum bitch. So. It was. They would hit. They were. The way the music was uh, was laid out. It would be like, like that's how they were supposed to hit the symbol. Yeah. But of course they would like hit it on the upbeat because that's how it should be. But it would piss me off because they would hit it like really hard on that. So like my 14 year old weak arms were like caving in already oh from God. holding the crash symbols and they were like just seemed like they were hitting them as hard as they possibly could and they probably were because they were assholes but you know it was like they would hit it like <laughs> and they weren't even like hitting their snare drums they were just just hitting the fuck out of the symbols that I was holding in my hands 
or oh, you know no. the person and the person I was in front of. Well, at least we. Uh... By the way, we should probably call the hair limey gentleman okay. who put me in that position because of Patrick and someone else that came before me. Like he automatically hated me because of my brother and his friend. Well, you can you can tell his replacement all about that. <laughs> I really want to get the original Hero Lamy guy, but yeah, we can also call that guy Bushniar Gozier or whatever it is. Gushnia. Gushnia. Bolshniar Gushnia. Hello, calls to this number are being screened by Smart Call Blocker. Please say your name after the tone, then press pound. Samantha? Hello, calls to this number are being screened by Smart Call Blocker. I can. Please say your name after the tone, then press pound. Samantha. Hello, calls to this number are being screened by Smart Call Blocker. Please say your name after the tone, then press pound. I don't know how. Sp Come and experience Yummy Buffet. Pick up hanger. I don't think they're hearing us. Let's try again. How, how smart is this call blocker? Hello, calls to this number are being screened by smart call blocker. Please say your name after the tone, then press pound. Paul Lynn's sister. Hello, calls to this number are being screened by Smart Call Blocker. Try again. Please say your name after the tone, then press pound. Hello, calls to this number are being screened by Smart Call Blocker. Please say your name after the tone, then press pound. You watch me get red fruity pebbles. Who are you? I'm the master rapper and I'm here to say I love fruity pebbles in a major way. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a fan of cultural appropriation <laughs> by Mr. Rubble. A.K.A. Rick Moranis. <laughs> Rick Moranis. I'll be in the Flintstones movie, but a Ghostbusters sequel? Fuck that shit. Hmm. You think he yes. gets... Yes. Does he get I'll, picked uh, by Betty with a stone strap on? Well, that seems like something Rosie would do. And I don't mean Rosie the housekeeping robot <laughs> from the Jetsons who once met the Flintstones. Mrs. Rosington. Oh. Um. Chris's mom. Gentlemen, Rosie O'Donnell is awaiting you. <laughs> There's Stone Age strap on. Okay. Well, next is that guy who texted earlier. I don't think he's going to answer, which is good because how am I supposed to do a prank call when, like, you kind of want the person? <laughs> I don't know. Just based on that picture? I mean, well, that... I have to see other things, but that picture was yummy. I yeah. mean, the guy's face might look like, uh. the guy who played the brother on Blossom or something, you know? Well, that's the thing I don't want to know because it'll wreck the fantasy. <laughs> but, um. Alright, alright. 
Yeah. We have. I really. Mr. William Idle once said. Flesh. Or fantasy. Is it four or or? A four, I think. Let's see. That's a song I randomly think of sometimes. Yeah, it's Flesh for Fantasy. Okay, sorry. It's okay. Um, this guy's name is James. We called him last time. Just like endless texts, texts, and that kept going. So, all right. He's. We called him. Some of this I read last time. But I'll just read it quickly. Who is this? Denise from the chat line. I haven't been on tonight. I know it was from a while ago. Where are you from? LOL, okay. How long was a while ago? Guessing you're playing tonight. Just keep in mind there are sometimes like a whole day gap because I don't look at Google Voice all the time. Uh, I said a location. Sometimes there's a day gap. I said I don't remember how long ago, but I had your number saved. You told me to call you. Where are you on today? W E apostrophe R E. And then he corrected it. Were, how old are you? Uh, no, 31. That's what I said. He corrected it incorrectly? No, he got it right. Um, Incorrect. He says, are you playing? I said, no. He says, how come? I said, I thought you were asking if I was playing around as in joking. He says, LOL, no, I was asking if you're, Y-O-U, are masturbating. If um, your masturbating has gotten better or worse. And he said, one minute later, you still here? I said, we'll try you next weekend, baby, not really into texting. He says, I can talk for a minute. I said, need to go to bed at this point, I'll call you next weekend. Can you call for 30 seconds? Are you married? Call me. Nope, not married. I'll call you next weekend. Just real quick, please. Don't want don't want to talk long just for period a second. Just for laughs. Since uh, in America. Terribly sorry. Obviously if you're where you are from a location a blotty chap has infiltrated the women's restroom and placed black licorice on the laboratory. <laughs> Terribly sorry. Thank you for that. Hope you don't have an uh, amusing response to this. Terribly sorry. Just for laughs, censored in America. Mm. Obviously, if you're from location. This isn't your real number. Well, take care. And then I think this is the next day or something. Hey. Oh, the man's done with you. Hey. Did we talk during the day or night? Hello? Is this Kiera? Not spelled the way you spell my name and not even the same name, I don't think. I said, I am from blah blah blah. This is a cell phone. I moved and kept my number. We never talked. So this guy likes to tell you to fuck off and then, like, text you five minutes later and be like, Hello? Are you going to respond to this immediately? Yeah, exactly. Are, are you not looking at your phone constantly? Exactly. Uh, I am from blah blah blah. This is a cell phone. I moved and kept my number. We never talked. As I said, you gave me your number on the chat line and said to call you. No, this isn't Kiera. My name is Denise. He says, did we talk at night? It's been a couple weeks since I've been in there. I'm glad you did. Curious as to what you're looking for, where you are, and what you're into correctly. <laughs> then, two hours later, hello? You are scarce. And the next day I said, you left me your number and a message. Then it's Monday. Can you talk tonight? Any chance? Can you talk? Call me, please. I want to talk to you, please. Well, I give up. Best of luck to you. I said, I'll call you on Saturday, baby. 
I can't talk on Saturday. Only night I can talk is tonight. Sorry. I said, okay. Um, he says, I can talk s on Sunday if you want. Obviously, you're like me and have reasons why you can't talk very often. If you're in a relationship or married, it's fine. I said, I'll call you on Saturday. I'm single, just busy. And he says, I, period, any talk on Saturday, but I can Sunday night. I said, why not, baby? And by the way, I'm not going to do... What's that? He has a period. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I'm not going to keep doing these long text things. This takes a long time to read. Because I work Saturday night, I'm off Sunday night. Are you a horny girl? Hello? Horny girl? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Yes. Horny. <laughs> yes, I am. Good girl. How naughty are you? What do you look like? I said, I'm not really into texting. I'd rather tell you. But I guess we can't if you're working tomorrow. Um, he says, and there is, and there is no way you can talk Sunday night? Hey, can text you and just give me an idea what turns you on and do you have any pics? I said, no, sorry. No, Wait, I don't picks. want to. Pics? Yeah. I said, no, I don't want to text. I'll call you tonight. Sent the Felicia picture and said, please send a pic of you as well. He says, oh, wow, that's hot. Are you a swinger? And then he just texted a little bit ago. Let me bring it up. God, I'm totally not doing this again. It takes too long. Uh, okay, where is he? He said, damn, you look so good. Then he sent the picture we were discussing, and that's it. So, I figure we can call him in a second. I'm going to wait till Cody gets back. Fran Funkles will be right back after this commercial message. What's so special about Wendy's new bacon Swiss burger? Bacon. Special sauce. Swiss cheese. More bacon. All on a toasted Kaiser bun. It's the only bacon Swiss burger with three strips of bacon. Ooh, doesn't that sound delicious? Wendy's new bacon Swiss burger. Come on in now and grab one while they're hot. Why are so many people drinking caffeine-free Diet Coke? I mean, that just tastes great. Caffeine-free! It's a good taste. I like the cool, crisp taste, and I like the fact that it's caffeine-free. Caffeine-free! The taste is just fantastic. It suits my needs wonderfully. You really, really don't taste the fact that it's not in here. I would drink it for any occasion. Caffeine-free Diet Coke! For me, it's perfect. Caffeine-free Diet Coke is, is great. The ultimate soft drink. Caffeine-free! Just for the free of it, just for the me of it, just for the taste of it, caffeine free. Just for the fun of it, just for the style of it, the real cola taste of it, caffeine free. Just for the joy of it, just for the ah, uh, just for the news of it, caffeine free diet. Coke. Just for the taste of it, just for the free of it. Super Combo, Super Combo, try your favorite Campbell Super Combo. Campbell Super Combo varieties, from freezer to microwave. Mm-mm, good food fast, like cream of broccoli soup and a ham and cheese croissant sandwich. Campbell makes lots of great combinations. Super Combo, Super Combo, try your favorite Campbell Super Combo. Super Combo only from Campbell. Mm-mm, good food fast. And now back to Brand Funkle. Please stand by for a Pran Funkle's public service announcement. Life is more 
more important than material things. You don't need all the gold and the diamond rings. Yeah, you make a lot of money and you make it fast. You get busted. You're going straight to a jail cell, man. It's going on. Police are getting serious. I don't mean to diss, but you gotta get out of this. Straight up, straight up, man. It's a known fact. It ain't enough money that can get your life back. Straight up, straight up. You want to make a lot of money and be a thug You want these fancy cars to flaunt your money But then you go to jail like all the other dudes Straight up, it ain't cool, you know it ain't safe So you got a 9mm in your face It's a game you can't win, so don't try to play Let's spread the word from New York to L.A. We're here to tell you that drugs are for suckers Straight up, police Straight up, straight up, police Straight up, straight up, straight up. police Well, I'm I'm straight up, and I froze. I'm so frozen that I'm rock hard. Pran Fuckles? Is it just me for the moment? Well, I think we should do something before we forget. Do you think? Ah, oh, we might want to wait for Kira to be back, though. That's the only thing. Let's make a prank phone call. Thank you for calling Oklahoma Christian University. not understand that request. Thank you for calling Oklahoma Christian University. Our normal business hours are 8 a.m. I do not understand that request. Thank you for calling. I do not understand that request. Uh, okay, fuck you. Hi, I had some questions about Remington Park. You're talking to a police department. Do you have an emergency on campus? Well, there was a Remington Park situation. Are you aware of that, sir? I am completely far away from Remington Park. Unless this has to do with a law enforcement capacity on Oklahoma Christian campus, then I'm going to hang up. It has to do with the flux capacitor, sir. At Rabbington Park. Watch Wager and Win. <laughs> it has to do with a super combo. It's a burger, a microwave burger, and a container of soup. And a naughty little boy eating all the last morsels or whatever it is. <laughs> what a naughty little boy. What a fella. Oh, you, you the little fella was dipping the sandwich in the soup? <laughs> I just want to eat a burger and I'm going to dip it in the vegetable soup. <laughs> I'm naughty. Super combo, super combo. Try your favorite Campbell super combo. Frank Sinatra's gonna sue us when he finds out that we used our pure bus. <laughs> you wanna call... Was that, that a guitar? No, is it a fan? My fingernails on a fan? Sounds like a guitar, Kira. No. I think you need it. It's been a hard day's night. Here we go. That's the only note it plays. 
It just it plays the beginning of Hard Day's Night. Yep. Yeah. Ba 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 ba! Let me try it on a different device. Maybe this will work. guy he's not going to answer probably the guy who sent here let me yeah let's call james the guy i just talked about who sent the boxer briefs picture so um i'll try to talk if he answers i'll try to talk to him into being pegged by teacher lady okay let's make a call Now, subscriber you are trying to reach is not available. Please leave your message after the tone. Um, hi, James. This is Denise. Um, God, I love your picture. It's so yummy. Um, call me back. Bye. I think this guy's married. Uh huh. Let's call. I don't want to read all these guys' texts. There's another guy. But we can call. <laughs> Remember the guy last time who wanted to get pegged by... Yeah. Dude? Okay, he... This is very short, this texting thread here. We left him hanging <laughs> last time. He actually left us hanging, kind of. By nipple clamps? Yes. Um... Okay, Dave... We sent him a picture of Felicia and Bertha, and he... Mimi. I said, can you also send a pic, please, baby? And did he? Yes, I forgot to send this. I'll send it right okay. now. Oh my Let's god. Let's take a look at this. It's another faceless shot. There's no... Oh boy. It's not... It won't be as shocking as the other one, but it's hilarious. Okay. Boy, if uh, if this computer ever gets investigated, the pictures, the only pictures that Warren has on it. <laughs> you recognize the I... girls in these pictures? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, looks like an individual who might drive a certain type of truck, might pound on a pile of hammers. <laughs> yeah. Are you high? Yes. That's good. That's good to hear. What can I get for you? He's in a garage or something, and it's a blurry, right, well, like his arms were moving, it's blurry. <laughs> it's a garage band. Woo-boo, woo-boo, woo. Yeah. I, I have a theory on why his uh, hands are moving. Okay. I think he was grabbing his junk and, like, <laughs> stretching it out, and he was like, take a picture while it's stretched out. <laughs> And then, you know, they took a picture, but his hands were still retracting from the position they were in to stretch <laughs> out his junk to try to make it look bigger. That's possible. He's wearing this weird, like, bikini <laughs> underwear. 
Like it's kind of like, like a he's... cloth or something. <laughs> he also looks like he's wearing. Uh, if you look at his shoulder area or collarbone area, it looks like he's dressed up as Batman. Uh, Mandy Patinkin from Princess Bride. Yes. Mon- what's his name? Montoya or something? Um, In- Inigo Montoya. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It looks like he's like that's he's wearing like a, a sex slave version of that costume or something. Yeah. Uh, almost looks like he has boobs from this angle. That's. <laughs> well, yeah. It's just a really awkward, strange-looking picture. His his torso looks a lot like Homer Simpson without a nose. It does. <laughs> oh my god, that's frightening. And now that's I wish I, we could post that on our channel. I know that is really frightening. Okay, so what did the teacher lady want to peg him or? Oh yeah. <laughs> Right. I want some of that shit, yo. Oh wait, that wasn't the end of the pictures. Um, he says, oh, "What?" There's more. He said, "Well, pictures, yeah, but not text." Sorry. He says, "What do you think?" I said, "Hot bod." Laverne fell asleep. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call you next weekend, maybe. XOXO. He said, "Wow, really?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "I'm down for getting together." I love eating pussy. I uh, didn't respond. Hi, Denise. I definitely want to get pegged by you. I said, ooh, I like having my pussy eaten. Laverne is the one who does the pegging or fucking of my pussy, actually. And... I won't fuck your pussy, hun. <laughs> he said, really good with my tongue. I'd like to eat the pussy while your friend pegs me. And Google Voice was nice enough to edit out the word pussy, and that's the end. Put some asterisks in there. Yeah, it's P and a bunch of Qbert swearing. Yeah. <laughs> Get this, it's Qbert in Q sound. They could do a Qbert high def and make it in Q sound, man. I was waiting for Qbert though. Don't have I wanted to, to hear that and then like <laughs> I know. Unfortunately, I don't have it, but I will after this show. Well, you've done good. Despite the... what just happened, you've done good. Why, thank you. Hello, I hear a dog. What? Yeah. Give it. That almost made me vomit. Diddle just. Okay. When I look up Hubert Death, I don't need like a minute long intro of other things. Thank you. When you said Hubert Death, did you mean Mario Brothers? It's completely unrelated. Yeah. Okay, we just want the death, but it's gonna do all the build up. And this isn't even the arcade. I don't care about the Nintendo version. Never mind. Moj, when you said Qbert noises, did you mean Moj Mario? Yeah, I did. You got me. So, can I just complain about something for a minute here? Sure. It's Brad Fuckles. Can I just complain about something for a minute? <laughs> Uh, this has happened, uh, mainly happened when I was, you know, a kid, but has also happened as an adult, but, uh, when I, I was listening to, you know, 
depending on the time period, it, it could be a cassette, it could be a CD, or it could be my iPod or my phone, but I'm listening to music from a video game and someone asks me what I'm listening to and I tell them that and they're like was you listening to Mario? Oh my god. Was you, was you listening to Anyway. Uh, yeah, it's just a just a pet peeve. Like, if you're listening to anything from a video game that's music, it's automatically, it's Mario for some reason. Yeah. Fuck you. You should take Coily and wrap it around them and just, like, squeeze all the life out of them. You mean Coily from the Three Stooges by Activision for a Nintendo <laughs> Entertainment System? One of the best... Video games ever made. I ain't never played it. And also uh, episodes of Scooby Doo. No, not really. Coily. No, this Coily. <laughs> Did you have that for Atari? had it on Atari 5200. Oh, well, aren't we hoity-toity? Yep. Fresh and Freudy. I actually wanted the 2600, but I got the 5200 for Christmas. Well, god damn it. And it, it sucked. <laughs> well, that was better than the 2600, right? Or did it not play 2600 games? No, it did not. Oh, that sucks. And it... It was awful. So it was kind of like getting a Sega Dreamcast. Um... It's, it's like getting the wrong video system, basically, because it's, it's just terrible. Well, there was almost a cosmic arc in my pants. They could not get about it. Classic rock. Oh, All day. Let's give a call to this individual. Who Dave. It's, uh, it's wearing a Mandy Patinkin from Princess Bride outfit. You can ask him about that. Okay. I'll start, I guess, just so hopefully he doesn't hang up. Like, Zardoz? Is that the character that... Mr. Jonathan J. Connery, please. I don't know what what are you, what <laughs> media are you talking about? Yeah, it's like a bag of sausages. Uh, I'm lost here. Well, it looks like Homer Simpson. That's the thing. <laughs> oh. I think. Oh. Might be was there a call? I was calling his number, but just hung up. I can see some nips in this picture. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the. I think he blocked us. Call from a different number. <laughs> No, interesting. Okay, I guess he didn't pay his phone bill. <laughs> oh, we, we still didn't do the thing I was gonna do. What's that? Uh, something we'd be remiss. Okay, dokie, go ahead. And doing if we didn't, if we didn't do it. Are you ready? Um, almost. Uh, it's gonna be a speed round of it. Okay. Are you ready? Ready. Sure. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. Well, folks, I'd like to 
We would all like to thank our patrons on Patreon at this point in the show. Would you like to do that? Okay. Redacted. Correct. Jimmy Soma. I'll even look you up. Mr. Donathan Wongathon. Oh my goodness. Jessica. Uh huh. And last but not least, Mr. K. Seven. I uh, yeah. And now back to Pran Funkles. Let's try one more number on this guy. If you'd like to support the show, we have a Patreon page and a PayPal link in the description of every video and on our About page. And we appreciate your donations. They help keep us going. Love you lot. Thank you, my turtles. Let's try it one more time. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. Your call cannot be complete. I think he didn't pay his bill or got rid of his phone because I've tried three different numbers. Well, goddamn. Great. Well, I guess he doesn't. He's not serious about the pegging. Okay. Next. If you like to listen to the show as a podcast, there is also a link on our About page on YouTube that you can copy and paste manually into your podcast app, and you'll be able to subscribe to Pran Funkles as a podcast. It will automatically update accordingly. Love you a lot. Kira? It's called the Fax Man. Um, Tom was trying to get some inside scoop of information from him, but he's like, oh, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. <laughs> so let's see. Tom Saltermeyer further investigates tonight. Is he ready? Mm-hmm. Robert. What's going on? Hello? It's a trajectory that your penis is not aware of, sir. I hope that's okay. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> sir. Sir, please. Surplus. Army surplus. What's that? Never mind. You got offended by the army surplus. Machine? Let's call a number where someone will answer. Okay. Let's do that. There is a cement wall surrounded by a chain link. <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Not my current state of mind, I do not. A couple of high people are doing a, a live stream. Mm-hmm. This is 
Sunjo Extreme. When you go into my Sunjo Extreme, you're gonna get rid of me, Mom. Thanks for calling Sunjo. To take advantage of today's special TV offer and order your Sunjo Extreme with free priority shipping, press 1 for all other in. Can you speak oh. up? Just a little. Yeah. First name, just so I know who I'm speaking with. Robert. Alright, Robert. What is your shipping zip code? 74332. Alright, 74332. Uh huh. All right, so with today's special TV offer, we'll include our universal wheel and rim brush, a utility bristle, bristle brush for free. Robert, you have three uh -huh. full years of coverage, free shipping, 30-day money-back guarantee, and it's a single payment of one ninety nine ninety nine, plus that free uh -huh. shipping for you. And I can add up to two. How many would you like? Now, is this a dollar ninety nine? Oh, one hundred ninety-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents would be the price for the pressure washer. Were you interested in getting set up for it? Oh, I suppose. Yeah, but here. I'm sorry. Oh, can you hear me? My wife turned right. on a, a DVD, and I told her not to. I'm sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. Your last name. Reynolds. Reynolds? Uh huh. Hello? I'll write in a good address for you. 423 Wonder Lane. Afternoon, sir. <laughs> Yeah, and what city are you located in? What was that noise? Oh, I'm not sure. Um, I didn't hear a noise on my end. What city are you located in? No, oh, I'm in Exacerbate, Ohio. What city are you located in, hun? All right, let's see here. So that address is 423 Wonder Lane, Big Cabin. No. Is that your correct address? Ma'am, are you All right, high? So what, All right, so what's your address then? Are you under the influence of a substance? All right, well, I do. If you're calling today, I'm going to have to disconnect. Thank you for calling. Well, you're not reacting like a human being. That's kind of weird. Let's give her a call back. She sounded sexy. Well. Thanks for calling Sunjo to take advantage of today's special TV offer. Thank you for calling to order Sunjo XPX 3000 XT1 Extreme Pressure Washer. My name is Maria. Please let this call is recorded for call quality and training purposes. May I have your first name, please? Pardon? Are you there? Pardon? May I have your May I have your first name, please? This is Shoni. Shoni, great, thank you. So, with today's special TV offer, we'll also include our universal wheel and rim brush, the utility bristle brush for free. We'll extend your warranty by one year to give you three years of total coverage. Plus, we'll pay for your shipping. Combined, you'll save over two hundred twenty dollars when you order today. You'll also get Sun Joe's No Questions Asked, 30-day money-back guarantee. We can get the pressure washer out to you in a single payment of $199.99 plus free shipping. I can add up to two today. How many would you like? Okay. 
So are you interested in placing an order today? Yes. Okay. Okay, so what is your last name? Virginia. And could you spell your first name for me, please? At Hardy's. S-H-O-N-E-Y. Okay. I can take a credit or debit card number whenever you're ready. 8180-440-784-3095-30. Was that a card number? Yeah. Okay. Could you give it to me one more time? 440 40 Seven eight four ninety five eight one eight zero. When you come in, am I gonna go? Hello. When you come in, am I gonna go? Who here likes fudge? Show of hands. Thanks for calling oh. Sun Joe. To take advantage of today's special TV offer and order your Sun Joe Extreme with free I priority shipping, you. press 1. For all other inquiries, please press 9. Again, to order your Sun, Sun Joe Extreme and get free priority shipping, press 1. For all You're other inquiries, please press 9. Go fuck yourself hmm. and Seems your like mother. We haven't heard from you yet. To order your hmm. Sun Joe Extreme. Looks like we haven't heard from your mother lately. We fucked the shit out of your mother and we're Thanks like, for calling Sun Joe. Well, I don't know how take it felt. Hi. How are you? Order the Sun Joe X3000 XT1 Extreme Pressure Washer. My name is Julia. And it's the call. Hi. Orders for call quality. Yeah. Right. And first name. Oh, my name is Robert. What's your name? That, ma'am. Did you mash a button on your calculator? <laughs> Call back. God damn it. I'm sorry, folks. I Thanks for we calling gonna... Sun Joe. Make to take advantage of today's tonight. special TV offer and order your Sun Joe Extreme with free priority shipping, press 1. For all other inquiries, please press 9. Again. Thanks for calling Sun Joe. To take advantage of... Uh, hi. Hello. Hi. Are, are you doing okay, ma'am? I'm sorry about what's going on in, in your life. Let's give her a call back. Thanks for I, calling Sun Joe. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. How are you doing? Hi. How are you doing? I think you're a neat person, and I wish you wouldn't hang up. Okay, let's move on. You want another business? Yeah. Okay. This is <laughs> Brella Shield. Let's make a brand Fockle. Thank you for calling yeah. Brella Shield. If you are calling to place an order, please press 1. Call an ape. Call an ape. Call him up. Hi, thank you for calling to order the Burla Shield. This is LaPortia speaking, and who am I uh -huh. speaking with? Robert Reynolds. Hi, Robert. How are you doing this morning? Splendidly. That's good. All right. Well, did you have any questions about the Brella Shield? 
I did. Can I ask him now? Or... Yes, go ahead. I mean, I, I don't want to be... I, I don't want to be offensive, but I just... I'm, I just want to know how effective it is, I guess. Uh, it's pretty effective uh, for what I hear. I don't have one personally, but uh, it does block out the sun, and it gets the car about 20 degrees cooler than what it is outside. So I would say it's pretty effective. Well, now I... I sometimes... Well, I have my windshield thing and I would just put my jacket in the window and roll it up kind of mm -hmm. is it better than that yes of course and I'm not I, I, I'm not trying to be offensive I just am wondering yeah it's, it's better it's like a I don't know if you watched the commercial for it uh, but it puts you in the mind of an umbrella that you would just put into the window. Um, we do have a deluxe version that gives you 20% more coverage than the standard, so it'll block out even more sunlight and heat. Um, so you can try those as well. Uh, but it's up to you. You well, have that money back guarantee. I mean, I didn't mind. I didn't, didn't want to start anything, but uh, there was a gentleman that started the listening process and he was he was kind of a metamucil gentleman okay and his name was Wilford did you know about okay. that? N no. Having fun with my daughter, Kim, wasn't always easy for me to do. Oh, well, when you heard that? At Remington Park. Okay. Uh, did you want to place an order for the Brella Shield? I did, yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. Uh, did you want to do the buy one, get one order, or did you just want one single unit? I definitely wanted to do the BOGO. Okay. Uh, well, it's nineteen ninety nine for the first one with free shipping, and then the second one is nine ninety nine, so it will be twenty nine ninety eight for the two. Mm-hmm. Cordelson's, yes. Is that what you wanted to do? It's Gordelson's yes. Alright, and what type of car would we be using today? Like, well... It's the kind of car that... makes a man float... in an Easter basket. Like a gentleman on Karnov. <laughs> <laughs> A basket of hammers. <laughs> a basket made of hammers. A basket made of hammers. You want to call back? A basket of hammers? Mm-hmm. Hello? Thank you for calling Brella Shield. If you are calling to place an order, please... Calling to order the Brella Shield. My name's Helen, and I'll be happy to help you with your order for quality purposes. Ah. As well as Can I start with your first name, please? Akira. Greg. All right. Well, as you saw, Brella Shield by Arctic Air is the fast and easy way to keep your car cool and comfortable on hot days. It works just like an umbrella. You simply pop open Umbrella Shield to expand, and it easily fits against your car's windshield. 
Best of all, Brella Shields universal size fits the windshield of trucks, cars, SUVs, and more. Brella Shield also keeps your car here looking like new by providing sunblock protection from fading and cracking. In our exclusive offer, you get one Brella Shield with a protective carrying case for just $19.99 with free shipping. And that's not all. Just for ordering today, we can double the offer, sending you a second Brella Shield. Ma'am, you just have pay you a heard? separate $9.99 fee. Ma'am, there's a If you find Brella that's... Shield is not for you, you can return it within 60 days and we'll refund your purchase price. How many buy one, get one sets would you like to order today? Okay. How many of the buy one, get one sets would you like to order today? I think he just wants one, please, ma'am. You want one set? Well, I, I, I don't, he does. Okay, and which credit card did you want to use today? Okay. Which credit card would you like to use today? Oh, may I place you on a brief hold, ma'am? I need to get my purse right now. No, we have other customers waiting, so if you don't have your card, give us a call back when you're ready to order. Well, it's just across the room here. I just have to go get it. It's like five seconds. So I'm sorry, we have other customers waiting. Let, please hold. Today is the day that all us cats must surely do our bit. We've got to do our share, so Uncle Sam can hit. You're listening to KYRA. Hot 94.7, Dayton, Ohio. Right now it's 67 degrees outside with 37% humidity. There will be scattered thunderstorms early, then partly cloudy after midnight. The low will be 67 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds will be light and variable. Chance of rain is 40%. Now, we have a song for you. It's from the 1989 album entitled Dr. Feelgood. And it is by Motley Crue. This is the title track. Hello, this is Greg.
See you.